Hi everyone! Welcome back for another hour of classes with me, Hina. Um, this is a really exciting class. I love these classes. We do them every week where we learn about a new metropolitan city and this week's city is Istanbul in Turkey. Um, I have not been to Istanbul. I've not been to Turkey at all. Um, so this class will be more of you guys educating me and telling me what all there is to see if you have traveled to Istanbul. So we have our travel fanatic, Carolina. Carolina was Hi. in the previous class where we spoke about Venice and she had been to Venice. So I like how you're back for like the next travel class. How are you? I'm really good, thanks. I really couldn't wait for that class today. Oh, that's awesome. Have you have you traveled to Istanbul? Have you been to Turkey? No, no. Unfortunately, I haven't been to Istanbul or Denai in Turkey. Mm -hmm. But I really hope that in the future I will have the opportunity to go there. Because oh. when I see all the pictures in internet from Turkey or Istanbul, just it blows my mind. So I have to go there. I know. It's so beautiful. I totally agree with you. So that's awesome. So we also have with us uh, Abdullah. Abdullah Turgat? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Oh, oh good this evening. Class, this class oh. was recommended to me by Abdullah. So Abdullah, I'm so happy that you're here. Hi. <laughs> lovely to see you again. Hi. <laughs> lovely, lovely to see you too. It's so good that you're here. This class, like I said, Abdullah was like, for next week, we should do a class on Istanbul. And I was like, yes, we should. And here I am. So Abdullah, I hope you're ready to do a lot of talking and tell us about Istanbul because I haven't been there. So I would love well, to know. Yeah, maybe you will do the talking part. I will support you. <laughs> no, no, no. This is, these classes are meant to meant for you guys to tell me why I should travel to these cities. All right. So that that is what these classes are about. But so, I mm -hmm. well, I I hope you did your homework. But <laughs> you're like uh, I actually don't know anything. So you better be no. ready to hear a lot don't of blame silence. Me. <laughs> Nah, it's okay. I, I won't pick on you. It's okay. Uh, we have Alberto <laughs> in the chat, and he says that he has been there. So, Alberto, I hope you can make it to class. Um, it looks like we have a lot of people from the last class who've joined us. Welcome, everyone. Um, so, it's really nice to get this class kick started. Hoyen, you, you said you have insomnia today. That's okay. We all, we all experience that sometimes. All right. So welcome, everyone. Like I said, this is a speaking class, and we are going to be talking about Istanbul, Turkey. And the objective is to convince all of us why we should go there if we haven't been there. So um, let's start off with introductions. Let's say our name. Let's say where we're from. And let's say whether we've been to the city of, uh, in question today on Spotlight. All right. So I'll begin. Welcome, everyone. My name is Hina. Nice to have you all join me. Um, I'm from Canada. And right now I'm in San Francisco, and I unfortunately have not been to Istanbul. Uh, it is definitely on my bucket list, if you guys know what bucket list is. All right, uh, so let's start with Abdullah. Um, hi, guys. My name is Abdullah. Um, I'm originally from Turkey, but I was born and grew up in Germany, and I still live in Germany. Mm -hmm. And I, have, I was in Istanbul... Um, uh, four years, no, three years ago. It was mm -hmm. three years ago. Yeah. Are you are you originally from like is your family originally from Istanbul or some other part of Turkey? Um, no, my family is from the eastern Anatolia, from eastern part of Turkey. Mm -hmm. the, my brother lives in Turkey. Uh, he lives in Istanbul, but the rest of my family uh, lives in east eastern part of uh, Turkey. Oh, okay, perfect. Thank you, Abdullah. So we have a Turkey native. If you guys have questions, he's he's who you should ask. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good. And next we have Blanca, our other travel fanatic, Blanca. <laughs> I'm a movie fanatic and a travel fanatic. You do all the fun stuff. There you go. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Blanca. I'm from Mexico. Mm -hmm. I haven't been to Turkey, uh, but I, uh, as far as I know, it's, uh, it comes from the movies. Taken part two or Midnight Express. That's all I know about Turkey or Istanbul. 
I actually haven't watched either of those movies. Now I feel like I have to watch it. <laughs> I mean, lot, lots of James Bond movies were um, filmed in Istanbul. Oh, like the the older ones, or or uh, the more newer ones. Um, well, for example, the newer ones and the older ones. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, yes. I always with, thought. Mm -hmm, go ahead. With uh, the older one with Pierce Brosnan. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, uh, but I forgot the name of the movie. It's a long time ago. Okay. Tomorrow oh, Never Dies. Yeah. Tomorrow Never Dies, The World Is Not mm. Enough, Golden Eye, and Die Another Day. These are the four movies with Pierce Brosnan. So, it's probably one of them. So, now you guys know. All right. So, that's cool. A lot the of. The World Bond Is movies. Not Enough. I think it was the. Enough. Yeah, it was that, that one. Yeah. Perfect. So, you guys, you want to have a quick tour of Turkey? You have to watch a Bond movie, The World Is Not Enough, which was a really bad movie, in my opinion. I'm not. <laughs> All right, thanks, Blanca. <laughs> Next, we have Brandon. Hi, hi, guys. How are hey, you? Brandon. You are good. How are you? Welcome back. Great, I'm here again. So, <laughs> I, I'm Brandon. I'm from Guatemala. Mm -hmm. uh, I have never been in Turkey, and I think that I will never. Uh, I think it's an interesting country. Uh, I have seen a lot of pictures on that country and it's yeah. so interesting. Yeah. Never say never, Brandon. Who knows? You could go. <laughs> yeah, maybe, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's awesome. Thank you, Brandon. Next, uh, we have, <laughs> next we have David. Hello. I'm David from Spain, Barcelona, and I've never been to Turkey. Is it is it on your list of places to go to? David loves the UK. He keeps going back to the UK. Uh, how you suppose that I will come back? <laughs> oh, maybe. I don't know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Probably uh, I can change my mind. Uh, who knows? There's long life. All right. Thank you, David. Uh, next we have Imad. Uh, thank you, Anna. I'm Imad. I'm from Syria. I actually went to Turkey, but in Istanbul I didn't stay there and didn't have the time to take it out in the city, but it's a very nice city. It's a very nice city, but uh, unfortunately you didn't have the time to explore yeah, it. Yeah, okay. didn't have the time. Okay. We'll explore it together in our Berlin class today. All right, perfect. Thank you, Ahmad. Uh, next we have Carolina. Hi guys, I'm Carolina and I'm from Poland. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, I haven't been uh, to Turkey, but I really hope that in the future I will go there. Perfect. Thank you, Carolina. And we have Norbert. I'm Norbert from Hungary. I have never been in uh, Istanbul, but I have an invitation. You, oh, so. do, te do tell us more about that, Norbert. Who's this invitation from? One year ago, I had a friend in the university. Mm -hmm. And uh, he invited me. That uh, he said uh, when I when I go to to Turkey, he mm -hmm. will uh, invite me uh, to his house, and he will uh, see um, show me the city. Oh, so you have so you have somewhere to stay when you if you decide to go to Turkey. Yeah. Yes. That that's awesome. It's always like someone like me. Once I know somebody in a city, that's it. Like I go. I'm like, oh, okay. You live in that city. I haven't been there. Travel, 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 travel. So, <laughs> I, I miss you so much. I should. I really want to see you. Travel, 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 travel. <laughs> so, Norbert, that's that's what you gotta do. Gotta take advantage of that. That's awesome. Thanks, so. <laughs> And we also have a couple of new people who joined us. We have Rom Romulo. 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 Is that right? Romulo Matos? No? Okay, I don't think he wants... I think I said his name wrong. He doesn't want to talk to me. <laughs> 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 All right, and we also have Alina Rojas. Alina Rojas Bajo. Okay, so if your microphones aren't working, guys... Elena. Elena, si? hi. Yes, yeah. Elena, hi. How are you? Fine, thanks. Is this your first time on Verbling? Yes, first yeah? time. That's awesome. Me. Yes, that's awesome. Welcome to class. It's really nice to have you join us. Um, so Thank our topic you. today is about Istanbul and Turkey. Have you been there? Uh, can you repeat, please? It's have about. You? It's about Istanbul, the city in Turkey. Ah, Istanbul. Okay, yeah. okay. 
have you have you been there? No, I have I haven't been there. Okay, all right. So we're gonna we're gonna explore Istanbul today in class and discuss what some of the cool things to do and see are when you visit there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're oh. welcome. Uh, and we also have Romulo. Romulo, if your microphone is not working, I would I would suggest that um, maybe you uh, leave you leave the class and give the spot up for someone else because if if you can't talk, then you won't be able to interact in class. You'll have the same experience as if you're watching from the outside. Okay, I'm so sorry, Romulo. Uh, I hope you can get your microphone fixed, and then I would love to have you back in class next time. Okay, and I said your name right, Romulo. 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 Okay, the R's are really, really rolled in like Spanish. Ramulo. Practice, practice, practice. Okay. It's Ramulo. Ramulo. No, Ramulo. 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 Oh, Ramulo. Not Ramulo. 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 I feel like everybody's getting it. Come on, man. Where are you? I feel like all the grilling me and baking me and like putting me on the spot. Stop it. <laughs> Stop. Okay, fine. I'm going to work on it. Next time I'll know how to say your name. <laughs> all right. All right, so let's see. So let's hear from our uh, our travelers who have actually been to Istanbul. So let's, <coughs> let's uh, start with Abdullah. So Abdullah, what did uh, you see when you were in Istanbul? Like, what was your favorite attraction when you went there? It was um, I liked the mosques there. The art, the architecture of the mosques. Mm -hmm. um, the maybe. Can I share a photo? I don't know if I'm able to share it. I, w I was going to say that for all those who have been yeah. to Istanbul, please, please, please share yeah. pictures. I would love to see it. Okay. So while, while Abdullah is pulling up a picture, let's just cover some, uh, some basics. So Istanbul, it is the largest city in Turkey, but it's not the capital of Turkey, is it? Uh, no, no, the capital... No, no. Yeah. The Capital city of Turkey is Ankara. Ankara, yeah. yeah. So the capital is Ankara, but Istanbul is the largest city. So it has the biggest population, um, and it's it's the country's economical, cultural, and it's the historical heart. Um, and the population is about fourteen million uh, that's, people. That's that's right. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and it's one of the biggest cities in the world, not just in Turkey or not just in Europe, but by population, it's one of the biggest cities um, in the world. And uh, I get and it's so half of Turkey is in Europe and half is in Asia. So does yeah. when you go to Istanbul, which is in Europe, does it have a very European feel to it? Um, yes, yeah, it's really westernized. Yeah, the Europe, European part is really, really westernized. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, and Istanbul is uh, like London, uh, no, or like New York, a melting pot uh -huh. of re of religions, of mm -hmm. uh, ethnics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's it borders um, Asia and Europe. I mean, no, not so many countries are uh, have. Are based on two countries actually. On two continents. Yeah, two. I'm two. sorry, two continents. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, and it, that's really interesting. Turkey is is in a very unique geographical position. So for all those who don't know, half of Turkey is in Europe, and the other half is in Asia. So it's a very unique position to be in because most countries are not like that. What's another country that's like that, where half, where some of it is in another continent and some is in another? It's an island named uh, Russia. Um, Sorry, Mad, what did you say? There is an island uh, near to Turkey. It's. Uh, you mean Cyprus? Uh, Cyprus? Cyprus? Yeah. Maybe. Cyprus. Yeah, that's, a, that's an island country near, like in the Mediterranean. And yeah. I think someone said it. Um, Russia. Russia. Yeah, Russia. So, Russia, not half of Russia, but quite a good chunk of Russia is in Europe. And most of it is in Asia, so these are very ge unique geographical positions to be in. Um, Alex, hi, Alex. Hi, Ina. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Welcome to class. Uh, fine, fine. Is this your first time you. on on? Is this your first time on Verbling or in my class? Yes, it's the first time in Verbling with you. <gasps> Yay! Welcome. Really nice to have you join us. So, have you have you been to Istanbul in Turkey? No, I'm from Colombia. 
Oh, okay, you're from Colombia? All right. So we're talking about Istanbul and uh, some cool things to do and see over there. Okay? So you're okay. more than welcome to join in and ask questions. All right? Okay. Um, all right. All right. So Istanbul it has 7 million foreign visitors uh, every year. I mean, this is what it was in 2010. I'm sure it's more now. Um, and the city's biggest, like, biggest reason people still travel to Turkey is because the city, its historic, historical center, is named as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Okay? Yeah. And we and covered... It, mm -hmm. And it was the European capital of culture in th three years ago. So, yeah. So, very, very recently. Yeah. So, it's yeah. not even like way in the past it had all this power. Uh, Istanbul is actually a very important city uh, like in, in the world right now. And it has been for quite a few years. It's considered a global city. Um, it hosts the headquarters of many Turkish companies as well as uh, media outlets. All right. Um, so yeah, World Heritage Site. We covered that in our previous classes as well. What is a World Heritage Site? World Heritage Site. Okay. What is that? Heritage Site. Uh, can destroy. You can't destroy it, yeah. So a World Heritage Site yeah. is when a part of a city or a country is protected. It's protected by UNESCO, which is uh, like a part of the UN. Um, and what they do is they, they, they cannot they allow you to not demolish or to destroy that site in any way. So it has to be completely preserved, right? So it has to remain the way it is. So we have a couple of, all right, so even I have seen beautiful pictures of mosques in Turkey. So let's have a look at some of the pictures. So Abdullah has linked us, like, these look, is this the same, you guys think this is the same mosque or are these different mosques? No, that's the same mosque. Yeah. It's the same mosque? Yeah. And what is. is what is it called? Uh, Sultan Ahmed. Sultan Ahmed. Oh, my, yeah. my thing completely gave way, so I'm going to. I'm just gonna unshare my screen. Sultan Hamid, yeah. So, Sultan Hamid Kami. I feel like I'm the only one who doesn't know this, but yeah. No, I, I, the, mm -hmm. no ahead, Jami. Go. Yeah, Jami is the Turkish word for mosque. So oh. Sultan Ahmed Mosque. It's just oh. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. No, it's it's okay. Okay, right. perfect. So I actually have an article that I took out from uh, Time Out Istanbul. So I don't have you heard of that. Abdullah, it's a it's a website, uh, Turkish based website. Uh, I heard I heard of it, yeah. Okay, so what I did was I actually pulled um, an article from there called "20 Great Things to Do in Istanbul." All right. So aside from mosque, let's have a look at what else there is, all that there is to explore in Istanbul. So Abdullah, whenever you're ready and you want to share your pictures, you can go for it. Ahmad, did you take any pictures when you were in Istanbul? Uh, no, unfortunately, I was in hurry and no, I didn't have time. Okay, uh, all right. So you actually haven't been, so you have to go again because you have to explore it. All right. Yeah. So did everybody open the uh, open the article that I linked Me. them? Me. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we're so let's read some of those things and let's uh, let's see what we would like to do. So before we begin, are there any things that you guys? have personally heard of in Turkey that you would like to experience or you would like to see? You're like, oh, you know, I haven't been, but I always heard that this was awesome and I want to go there and do that. No? I feel like, I feel like it's, not that, it's, not, it's not that well explored. Hi, Majid. Nice to have you in the chat. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen and let's read. There's going to be some cool new vocabulary words, so you guys are more than welcome to ask me what they mean. All right? So 20 great things to do in Istanbul. Haggle for carpets, tuck into Kavun Dolmasi. How do you say that, Abdullah? Um, Kavun Dolmasi. Dolmas. Okay, what is, what is that? Uh, these are stuffed um, melons. Oh, stuffed melons. Okay, so it's a dish. Yeah. It's something that you yeah, eat. It's a dish, yeah. Maybe I will sh let me show you the picture of it. Uh, okay. Wait a second. You, you can fill it with um, flesh or also with um, vegetables. Oh. Uh, when you say flesh, you mean meat. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, meat. Sorry. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see. So. Okay. 
So I go for carpets, uh, tuck into a kuban dolmas, and then kick back in a hammam. Hammam, yeah. Like, yeah. Is this a it's, hammock? Uh, no, hammam is uh, an oriental version of sauna. Oh, a sauna. Yeah, a sauna. hammam, yeah. Oh, who knows what a sauna is? I'm writing that in the verb link chat. What's a sauna, guys? It's like hammam. <laughs> <laughs> it's like hammam, but what is it? Well, Abdullah said a, a hammam is like a sauna, so we have to decide what a sauna is. What is a sauna? It's like, yeah, it's like a big container of water that is, um, let's say, 27 degree temperature. And, uh, yeah. Oh, like okay. That. Is it is it a container of the law or is it the room? Is it the room? I will sh it's, paste. Yeah, yeah it I contains will room it. and uh, it contains room and and uh, it has the post uh, kind of things. Yeah. It, so. Uh, yeah. So, who, so yeah, a sauna is a room yeah. that that's very yeah. hot. All right. So let me yeah. let me show you guys what. Uh, let me show yeah, you yeah. Guys yeah. Yeah. But a hammam is much much more bigger than a sauna. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Has everybody seen saunas? This is what they look like. Have you guys seen this? Yeah. yeah. So, so it's a wooden room, and there you see over here in the corner, there's coal. So what you do is the coal heats up, and then you throw water on it, and it turns into steam. And then it steams the entire room. Okay? And people just sit in this room to, like, get rid of waste, and they sweat a lot, and they cleanse themselves. And does anybody know the origins of a sauna? Like, where does a sauna come from? It's it's from Finland, okay. So a sauna, it's it's a Finnish invention, and it's a, a lot of Finnish people they cannot have a house without a sauna. Okay. Bye, Hoyan. Really nice to have you join us in class today. Okay. So a so, so Abdullah is saying that in our article, a hammam is like a is a Turkish sauna. So it's really a basically yeah. a really big sauna. Okay? It is. Yeah. Um, well, I, po I posted a. Uh, the link of a some uh, hammam. Of a hammam, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, no. Let's sure. let's have let's have a look at those guys. Ooh, this looks so royal. This looks so much nicer than the other sauna, don't you think so? <laughs> it, yeah. it is actually, yeah. And um, they, I mean, these are very old hammams. It, they date us back to the twelfth um, century. Wow. Yeah. Uh, has it, do you know what these remind me of? Has anybody heard of uh, the Roman baths? Roman baths? Yes. Yeah? yeah. What, are, what are those? Yep. Uh, Blanca, what, can, can you tell us what the Roman baths are? Uh, constructions like those you have shown where um, ancient Romans took showers. Yeah, exactly. I actually thought that that was just a Roman thing, but after seeing these pictures and the Roman baths, they were not uh, they were not sauna. So the the water didn't steam. You basically just took a bath in them. So these are the ancient Roman baths, right? So I don't know for some reason the the hammam reminded me of this. That's very very cool. All right. Um, sorry, I'm just gonna Alex. I'm just gonna mute you just because there's like a car that keeps driving by. It's very annoying. All right, so you can unmute yourself whenever you uh, want to talk or you want to say something. Okay. All right. So let's go back to our article. So 20 great things to do in Istanbul. One is haggling for carpets, uh, eating this dish, and then kicking back in a hammam. I would definitely kick back in a hammam, especially if it looks <laughs> like that. Hammam is on my list of things to do now. Okay. So let's uh, let's so let's get a little bit of reading done as well. Carolina. Can I get you to read number one? Yes, sure. Uh, touch the head of the uh, Ottoman Empire. Yeah, Ottoman, and, uh, Ottoman Empire. Ottoman Empire. Ottoman Empire. Mm -hmm. A part command center for a massive military empire. Part are are what? Ar ar archetypal. Archetypal. <laughs> archetypal. Eastern pleasure dome. Uh, the la La lavishly, lavishly, lavishly decorated top Kapi Palace mm -hmm. uh, was the seat of Ottoman uh, power for over three centuries. Mm -hmm. At least uh, half a day is needed to explore it. And given the high entrance fee, you might want to take a full day to get your money worth. Mm 
Money's work. Uh, money's money work. work. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are pushed for time, the must see features are the harem, imperial treasury, and the views from the innermost country courtyard. 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 Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much, Carolina. I have a question. So, um, entrance fees. Do you guys like? Do you not go to an attraction if there are entrance fees? So tell me. So if you were to visit a country and you realize that what you want to see, there's a very high entrance fee. Would you still go there? No, actually, I refuse it. No, you wouldn't go, Imad. No. No, you don't. Okay, you don't think it's worth it. Okay, who else? What else? Would you guys still go? Like, say you had to pay. 50? I think it depends on how much money you have. Okay, it depends on how much money you because have. Because if, if I would have, I definitely go. But if I don't have that much money, then I I left out. You you you'll overlook it. Okay, yeah. Blanca, what about you? I'll pay because I don't know if I have the chance to come back again. Oh yeah, so you don't wanna you don't wanna have regrets that oh I I went there and I didn't see this because of money, right? Mm, yes. Yeah, uh, and I agree. I think it depends on how much money you have. It really is. Some entrance fees are really high. Like, I, I know when you go to Paris, the Louvre, the Louvre, do you guys know of the museum? I know that the entrance fee for that is pretty, pretty high. So it's like, I would love to go there and see the Mona Lisa, but I don't know if I have that much money. Hey? You won't believe I, went, I didn't went to the Louvre. You didn't go to the Louvre? Is it because of the entrance fees? Yes, the only one time in my life. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I mean, after that, regret. yeah. So exactly. So I, I mean, I think it's like it's sort of you don't know what to do because you're, at one point you want to you know not spend all your money and on the other side you want to see everything. So it's definitely it's definitely tricky. Okay. So what? The, so touch the heart of the Ottoman Empire. So the Topkapi top Palace. How do you say this, Abdullah? Um, Topkapi. Topkapi. Palace. So let's have a look at what this looks like. Is this one of the? Uh, I don't think it's one of the mosques. Ooh, check it out, guys! Wow, that looks beautiful. So, uh, did you go here? Did you visit this place, Abdullah? Um, I, I, I see it from the outside, but I uh, wasn't able to see it from the inside. Oh. Yeah, and this uh, the top couple palace was the residence of the. Ottoman sultans, mm -hmm. so they lived there actually. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. So this was the so these were like actual habitable castles. So people used to live here back in the day. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's awesome. So sultans. So can someone can someone tell me what the sultans are? It's like generals. So. Yeah, it's more like kings, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so back in the day when uh, Turkey had you know kings and sultans, so sultan is another name for a king, all right? Yeah. Any qu any questions that you guys have about the, the this palace or what we or what we've read? Okay, what does lavishly decorated mean? Lavish. Um, it is like fashionable, maybe lavishly. Uh, no, it's not fashionable. Who can tell me what this word lavish means? Okay. Has anybody heard it before? Um. Okay, so lavish, when you go to a palace, for example, and everything is golden, and there are so many beautiful, uh, like, scenery, and there's like, uh, what you call it, um, sorry, there's like all the design on the walls, so all that stuff, it's really rich and it's elaborate. Everybody know what elaborate means? Okay, so it's very it's it's very over the top. All right, so over the top. Let me show you guys the picture so you guys can see what it means. I was like, so rich and elaborate. Okay, so let me show you a picture. This would be this would be lavish. My God, my internet is so slow. What is going on? Uh, hold on. Give me, a, give me a minute, guys. Okay, so can you guys see this room? Let me just, I'll yeah. just try it. Yeah, can yeah. you guys see this room? Can you see all all that's going on in the room? So there's so much writing on the wall. There's all this stuff in the, in the windows. So this would be lavish because it's elaborate and it's rich. 
All right. Did you guys have a la Do you guys have lavish furniture in your house? No. No. Yes, I have. No. Oh, sorry. There's like there's like noise coming from somewhere. I'm just gonna mute you guys. All right. So that is lavish. What else? What other word did we have in here? So lavishly decorated uh, Topkapi Palace was the seat of the Ottoman power for over three centuries. Okay, at least half a day is needed to explore it, and the high entrance fees might not make you want to go there. Um, um, there's I think the entrance fees are not not that much high as it um, as it announced here in the article. Oh, okay, it doesn't say what the fees are. It just says that they're very high. Yeah. So. Maybe maybe it can be different for foreigners and locals. Do you guys yeah. know that? Do, do you guys experience that? That when you travel somewhere, the fees are different for, for foreigners and they're different for locals? Do you have yeah. that in your... Yeah? Imad, yes. where, did you, where did you experience that? Actually, my, my city, Aleppo, it's also a um, World Heritage Site. Mm -hmm. And also, if, if you are a citizen of the city, you don't pay actually anything. I think uh, the foreign pay a little bit some fees. Yeah. Okay. And what what about who else? Who else said yes that it's the same in their city? Me. Yeah. Me. Oh my God! I didn't even hear who said me. Blanca, was that you? Yes. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. So. Uh, no, my country the fees are the same for foreign people than Mexican. But for yes. some other people in uh, countries, I mean, if you go. For instance, yeah, there are different fees for and for people. Okay. And do you guys think that's right? Like, do you guys think that that's it's fair to do that? Well, it's not fair, but it's uh, very common, especially in Istanbul, unfortunately. Oh, it's common in Istanbul where they charge you different fees if you're a foreigner. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, I, I think it happens in all metropolitan cities. It happens also, maybe all, also in Germany. Oh, yeah, is that yeah. so, Norbert? We're in Hungary as well. Uh, yes, I think it's in in Budapest, in the capital. Okay. There are examples that um, something is uh, exp more expensive in the tourist than the Hungarian. Oh, okay. It's um, it's actually I haven't experienced that here. Like here in North America, I've traveled a lot in the states and in Canada. It's not like that over here. But it is like that in Thailand uh, because they have like palaces and actually in Thailand it's completely free for locals. So if you are a local, if you are a Thai resident, it's completely free for you. But if you are a foreigner, which is what I was, it is really expensive. So what they do is they jack up the prices. Okay, What does that mean? That, that means exploiting. Who knows what it means to exploit? It increased. Increase, yeah. yeah. So why are you increasing it? So you are exploit. What are you exploiting? Okay. Um. So, so for example, so for example, Blanca said that she regrets not going to the Louvre. So she's a foreigner in Paris, and she's like, oh, I traveled all the way from Mexico to see Paris, and I want to see the Louvre. And then she gets to the Louvre, and they're like, Oh, you're a foreigner, and you came all this way to see this. Okay, you know what? If you want to come in, it's 50, 50 euros. All right? So, like, well, you want to see it, right? Like, here, 50 euros. Pay, pay and go in, right? So this is exploiting because people know that you have traveled so far and you have put so much money to come and do this. They're like, these people are not going to not see this attraction. It's like going to Paris and not going to the Eiffel Tower, right? Because... Uh, you you would right. So when you go to the Eiffel Tower, people are like, "Oh, you're a foreigner. You paid a lot of money to be here. You probably really want to go to the Eiffel Tower, right?" It's a hundred euros if you want to go to the Eiffel Tower. You, they would they wouldn't do that to a local, right? They wouldn't say, "Oh, you live here and you can come here every day, pay a hundred euros." The locals are like, "Whatever. I don't have to see this." So this is called exploitation. Okay. So when you know that somebody has a need or somebody is, really wants to do something and you have the power to let them do it. But you're like, you know what, I'm going to jack up the prices. Jacking up the prices means increase the price based on, based on nothing, just because you want to, because you can. So when you travel, all these tourist attractions, they jack up the prices for foreigners to exploit them. 
All right? And it's really, it's really sad. Like when I went to Thailand, I had a friend who was Thai. And he would get in everywhere for free. And I was paying like $20 entrance fees just to like go see a palace. So it was, it was, really, it was really strange. So I know that in big metropolitan country, uh, cities, they definitely do that very often. Okay. So, all right. So let's see. Any questions before we uh, see what else there is to do in, uh, in Istanbul? What's a harem? What's a harem, guys? The harem? Uh, did, you, did you see this, Abdullah? Um, I, know, I knew it from, from pictures. I haven't seen it. It was the place for the women or for the concubines of the sultans. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, does everybody know what that word means? Concubines. Can you explain that to us, Abdullah? Mm, the, the lovers of the sultans. Yeah, basically, so uh, back in the day, there were like a king, he, he could have more than one wife, okay? So and each wife was like, so if he had like say five or six wives, then he had concubines. So I'm writing that over there. So a, con a concubine was basically one of the many women that the, uh, the king married or kept in his palace, okay? So a harem, a harem is where you keep all these women. Okay, so for example, if you have if you have a palace dedicated especially to keeping all your wives and mistresses, then you have a harem for them. Okay, you can also have a harem of women. Okay, so a group, a group of women. Okay, so per perfect. So there's a harem that you can go check it out as well. Okay? A harem of men. You can have a. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> that was just for women. Men were not allowed. Yeah, that, that was just for women. Yeah. Yeah. One man can have many women, but one woman can only have one man. Oh yeah, equality. <laughs> I'm kidding. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so it, it's it's very common. So having a harem uh, is can be a place, and a harem of women are uh, basically a group of women, a concubine. This word is not used that often anymore. Concubines. Yeah. It's it's a very ancient way to describe yeah. this uh, situation. Mm? Yeah. Okay. It is. Ab Abdullah, do you want to share your pictures with us? Um. No, just go ahead. I will maybe do it later. Okay, you well, yeah. I'll, I'll give you the last five minutes of class, and yeah. then you can share your pictures with us, okay? Actually, I have a video on YouTube. It shows all the pictures from old times in Istanbul. You can see it if you want. Oh, okay, perfect, definitely. Uh, if you link yeah. that to us, we'll be, we'll be more than happy to check it out. Okay. Okay, so let's get Blanca. Can I get you to read number two? Okay. Explore... Byzantine wonders. Though of the Piran track, it would be a big mistake to overlook oh, the, the church of Saint Saint Savior, mm -hmm. Saint Savior mm -hmm. in Cora. Mm -hmm. Known for its Byzantine splendor, it houses celebrated mosaics. 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 Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. frescoes that are arguably, <laughs> arguably. Arguably, the most important surviving examples are from that era. Mm -hmm. Ironically, this Christian art owes its excellent condition to the church conversion to Islam in the early 16th century. Perfect. Thank you so much, Blanca. So, Abdullah, what are the uh, what are the uh, Byzantine wonders? Uh, the Byzantine wonders um, are well. Um, before the Ottomans, Istanbul was actually uh, uh, it was um, an how do you say that? Oh, blimey! Yeah. Uh, it was a it was um, not an empire kind of. Empire. It was a, yeah Christian empire before oh, the yeah, okay. and they and they call it the Byzantines. They call it themselves, mm -hmm. and but with the um, um, conquerment, no, conquer of Istanbul. Mm -hmm. Conqueror, it, it, conqueror. Con yeah, it conqueror of Istanbul, it became a Muslim uh, state or oh. Muslim city. Oh, okay, so conqueror. What's a conqueror, guys? Conqueror. Who can tell me what that means? So it's someone who conquers. What's conquer? Get a control or something? Yeah, who controls, who takes who, rule. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So, for example, if a new king he takes some other king's country, then he has conquered that country. All right. He has taken control. It is now his. So a conqueror would be a king who has done that. And someone who conquers. So to conquer is the verb. Conquer is the noun. The person who does it. So mm -hmm. go ahead, Abdullah. And Istanbul was conquered in 1453. Mm -hmm. yeah. by, by the Ottoman Empire. By the Ottoman Empire. Yeah. Okay. So there. So the Ottoman Empire conquered Istanbul. Yeah. All right. And then they and, and then they converted. So we already covered this. They converted. Mm -hmm. The, the nation from uh, Christianity to Islam and well, now yeah. actually well um, the Christians were allowed to um, remain Practice. their own religion so Practice. they were they practiced their own religion yeah yeah perfect all right yeah so that's a really good thing so uh, so even though the country technically converted to Islam uh, yeah. everybody who was a Christian was allowed to practice their own religion. So when you are allowed to stay in your religion, when you don't have to convert out, then that is saying practicing, okay? So when you are a part of a religion, you practice that religion. Um, for example, you can you can practice, uh, you can practice, um, Imad, what, uh, what would you say you practice? Actually, um, I can't say it because I'm, I'm Muslim and, uh, but yeah, as a Christians in my country, you know, Christianity started in Syria. Mm -hmm. So, they all very old uh, religion, and they can practice everything actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, Imad himself, you yourself practice Islam, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, Imad practices Islam. If somebody else practices Christianity, so when you are part of a religion, you practice that religion. Okay. So, are these the pictures of uh, of the Byzantine wonders? Uh, yes, they are. Um, wow. uh, yeah, yeah, there are lots of aqueducts, mm -hmm. and um, there are lots of yeah. There are also a Colosseum mm -hmm. in Istanbul, and it's yeah. And what else? You have they have the um, how do you call it? The big pyramid columns. Pyramid um, columns. Pyramid. Yeah, columns. pyramid columns, like mm -hmm. in Cairo or in other cities. Yeah. So in these pictures, like this picture, this looks like a ruin. Who has anybody heard of these words? Ruins. Yeah. It's remaining, yeah. remaining yeah. from yeah. old cultures. Yeah. Yeah, uh, David, you were gonna say something? No. No. Okay. So yeah, basically. Shape. <laughs> yeah. So basically, a ruin is a structure that is still remaining. So whatever part of that structure still remains today is called a ruin. All right. So thousands or hundreds of years ago, this was probably a very big, big building in this civilization. And now this is all that is left of it. So the, this, whatever is left, is called a ruin. Okay. So for, this is a big ruin. All right. So is this. So these are called ruins. Does anybody know of any other ruins around the world? Romania. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Ahmad, what did you say? The Romanian ruins. Romanian, yeah, in yeah. Rome. Perfect. In yeah, yeah, Mexico. there's in Mexico. What are the ruins in Mexico, Blanca? Well, close to the pyramids. Close to the pyramids, okay. And David, what did you say? Uh, Pompeya ruins. Pompeya, yeah, exactly. Has anybody heard of Easter Island? Easter Island? Easter Island, yes. it's uh, yeah, it's part of Chile. And they have these yes. ruins, and they're one of the most ancient ruins in the world. And people don't even know how they were made. So they're quite a mystery. So they have their ruins from different parts of the world and different civilizations. You can find them in every, in every historical city, basically. Okay? So these Byzantine wonders, these are ruins found in Istanbul. Perfect. Okay. So any, do you guys have any questions about this paragraph that we covered? Would you guys, so between the palace and the Byzantine ruins, what would you guys like to see? Would you, which one do you think is more interesting? So you only have half a day. What, what, do you, what would you go see? Not, neither. I haven't seen anything that I want to see yet. Move on. Okay? All right. <laughs> so let's see. So let's move on. No, to that's it's hard to pick up a choice between all this, yeah. Yeah. 
between palace and ruins, I personally would like to see uh, the palace. I mean, for me, I think that's it's so it's so lavish and it's so beautiful. The ruins they look like it it might be too hot <laughs> to go walking there outside in the sun, All right? So let's see. Uh, so let's get uh, Elena. Yes. Can you read number three for us, please? Yes, of course. A haggle for carpets and at the Grand Bazaar. Serio, serios, serious, shoppers, sh serious, serious, serious mm -hmm. shoppers should go armed with a notepad, a calculator, and plenty of time when visiting the Grand Bazaar. Three hours is about the minimum needed for a purchasing expedition. Choose your vendor from over uh, 5,500 uh, and prepare for an onslaught on of on Onslaught of courting and uh, cajolement. Sorry, there's like... Lauded, yeah. Onslaught of courting and cajolement. Yeah. Your rook is a highly recommend, recommend, recommended little carpet uh, store with, while Paco stocks the city's best handbags and purse, purse, purses. For co coats and jackets, ca I don't know how, how to how pronounce do you, How do you say this, this. Abdullah? Abdullah, how do you pronounce this? Uh, why the, why the second? Uh, it's Kürkçüler Çarşısı. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> try again, I, I, Elena. <laughs> I think I I cannot yeah. pronounce it yeah. well, but that's okay. Cornelius Carcini, Carcisi. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Carcisa. Okay. Is the area of choice. While beating down the price, remember that the vendors pay the rent in gold. A half. Hefty. Hefty, hefty, seven hefty, kilos. hefty, 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 mm -hmm. seven kilos a year for shops on the main avenue. Perfect. Thank you so much, Elena. So, who likes uh, authentic carpets? Who would buy a carpet from Turkey if they went there? It's worth it. It's, it's, it's very good. Yeah. Cool. It's very high quality. You know. Yeah, that's a very good thing to say. So it's very high quality. So it has very good craftsmanship. Do we know what that means yeah. to have good craftsmanship? Yeah. Yeah. So it was. It's basically another way of saying that something is very high quality is saying it has good craftsmanship. So it was built by only the best of the best, and it was built of using the best techniques. All right. Um, so haggle at the Grand Bazaar. So Abdullah has pasted a picture of the Grand Bazaar for all those who'd like to see it. Um, what else? So. Abdullah, did you buy a carpet from Turkey when you went there? Um, actually, I didn't. Uh, I didn't buy a carpet, but I uh, bought some souvenirs for friends with, with my dad. Mm -hmm. And that, but you can find everything what you want from from souvenirs, from dried fruits, uh, from snacks, from carpets, from mm -hmm. jewelry, mm -hmm. from jackets, uh, from yeah, from coats. Wow. Yeah, so it's you have amazing. everything. And so, everything. Yeah. So what does it mean to haggle? Who can tell me what it means to haggle for a carpet? To haggle means to bargain. Yeah, to, to like, bargain. To, yeah. Uh, to bargain, yeah. yeah. Yeah, to get the best price, okay? Yeah. Everybody knows what haggling is because your mother haggled when you were young in front of you. Yes. You went to the <laughs> store and your mom would go like, I want to buy these apples, but like, no, I'm not paying this much. No, 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 no. We're gonna, we're gonna reduce the price. No, no, no. You have to come down lower. This is haggling, right? Then the yeah. shopkeeper's like, okay, ma'am, I'll give you for five dollars. No, no, no. I want it for three dollars. No, okay, four. No, three fifty. Right? And this is you must, yeah. And you must be very, very good at uh, haggling if you want to go to yes, Istanbul. The, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. So they try especially, to rip you off. Yeah, mm -hmm. Especially at the Grand Bazaar because uh, the prices are a little bit uh, expensive and you must be very, very good at haggling. Okay, so yeah. so when you go, so for example, if you go to the Grand Bazaar and yeah. you want to buy a carpet, right? And you're yeah. as a tourist, I can be like, oh, I want to buy this carpet, and the person is like, oh, 
This is a tourist. I'm going to rip them off. Rip them off is make yeah. them pay too much money for something. Money. All right. So it I'm could, going. It could happen, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it definitely. So they're like, oh, you're a tourist and you want to buy this? Okay, this yeah. carpet is actually fifty dollars, but to you, I'm going to charge two hundred dollars. All right. <laughs> so and and yeah. if I pay, if I pay that much money, then I got ripped off. Okay, that's what I would say. I'd go back home and I'd be like, "Yo, man, this carpet, I got ripped off for it." All right, I paid two hundred dollars and it's only worth fifty dollars. Okay, so this is what you would say. So when you are being exploited, then the other person is trying to rip you off to get more money from you than they deserve. Okay, so you have to be really good at haggling if you yes. don't want to be ripped off. So Blanca, yes. in all your travels, have you ever been ripped off? Uh, no, I think I uh, no, I don't think so. I yeah. how do you say bar, the bargain that the other word? Bar haggle. Yes, I used haggle. to haggle. You haggle, and you, are you a good haggler? Oh, more or less. A good haggler. Okay. All right. What about what about you, Carolina? Have you ever been ripped off? Well, just uh, I I started to think about it, and I I really don't know. I, I don't think so, to be honest. I don't know. Yeah. I was ripped off when I was in Asia. I was uh, I was traveling to I was in Malaysia I think and it was my first trip while I was living in Asia and like I went to the street vendor to buy a T-shirt or something and they were like oh it's so many ringgits and I was like oh my god that's only ten dollars and like I didn't realize that all these T-shirts are actually made in Malaysia and they actually cost like two dollars. So I was like, oh, it's only ten dollars. Here, take my money. And then when I moved back, I was like, oh, I got ripped off. That guy ripped me off. So I got ripped off a couple of times in Malaysia. Right. So you have to be really good at haggling if you don't want to be ripped off. All right. Are you? Is there, are you, is there yeah? any difference between bargain and haggling? Um, bargain. I think bargain is more like civilized. Like bargaining is, oh, I want to pay this much. Oh, but it's worth that much. Haggling is, you have to bring the price down. Otherwise, I'm not gonna buy it. I'm gonna walk away if you don't like, if you don't bring the price down. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Okay. Like, oh, okay. and then and then the guy's like, no, no, no. Okay, I'll put the price down. Okay, well, how much you want to put the price down for then? Yeah? This is haggling. All right. It's not okay. as civilized as bargain. Bargaining is, I want to pay. Twelve dollars for this. Oh, but it's worth it's worth fifteen. Let's settle at fourteen. That's a bargain, all right? Or you got a bargain. You got a good deal. Haggling is. I'm not gonna pay for this. I'm not gonna. No, no, no. This is haggling. Right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Okay. so you so you can bargain. You cannot be all. Please don't charge me this much. You have to be a little more like a little a, a little more thick skin, right? When you yeah. haggle. So Abdullah, I want you to share your pictures with us in class now. I like to ask uh, Abdullah. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Go. Abdullah, um, comparing to other cities, how expensive is Istanbul? Uh, compared to other cities, well, um, it depends on what you buy. I mean, um, um, if you buy souvenirs around the mosques, there are little um, stands. Around the mosques and they sell souvenirs. They, I, I wouldn't recommend it because they're really, really high. I would recommend you to go to the Grand Bazaar. They're a little bit much more um, cheaper than the stands around the mosques. And and the hotel prices, uh, the hotel prices are, um, how do you say, are not so. Uh, no, they aren't. I wouldn't say that they aren't expensive. Um, they're affordable. Um, affordable. Yeah, af they're affordable. Mm -hmm. And restaurants, well, restaurants um, are a little bit expensive, especially mm -hmm. if you. There are lots of um, restaurants at the uh, um, at the seaside, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they're lots lots more expensive than in the inner cities. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna write this. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I didn't catch that. Uh, the hotel prices they're affordable. They are neither expensive nor not cheap. They're affordable. 
for the book. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I'm just going to say that Abdullah said that when you go to a restaurant near the sea, it's more expensive than in the inner yeah. city. That's because they charge you for the view. Who can tell me what that means? Charge for the view. Change the view? The scenery. So when you go to the sea, they're like, oh, here, there's a restaurant, and if you sit at this table, you can see the scenery, and the food is $40. Okay? So this is, this is, again, this is ripping you off, because you're going to the seaside, and they charge you for the view. So the food isn't that expensive, but because you have a beautiful view when you're eating your food, they jack up the prices. So they, char they charge you more, because you have a beautiful view now, as opposed to in the inner city, where you don't have that much view. Okay? So this is called charging for the view. So if you go to a restaurant, and so if you go to the same restaurant, like a restaurant in the inner city and on the, on the sea, It'll be more expensive at the sea because at the sea, there's a view that they can charge you for. They can't charge you for that in the inner city. This is called charging for the view. Okay? So you get charged for the view at the, at the sea, Blanca. So stay away from it. Just eat at a KFC or something. <laughs> See that McDonald's. <laughs> I would, when I travel, I try to keep my food like really low because I know that if I try to be like, oh, I want to eat at a fancy restaurant, I'm going to be out of money really quickly. So Me I'm too. always. I do the same. Yeah. I'm always like, <laughs> I gain, I actually gain weight when I go traveling because I eat so much McDonald's and so much like junk food because it's so cheap. It's available everywhere. So, so bad. Traveling when you're poor is like really, really tough. <laughs> so, so Abdullah has actually posted uh, old Istanbul, a video of old Istanbul in the uh, in the chat. So, for all those who like to who like to watch the video, that that's there. So, Abdullah, I'm guessing you're not you're not uh, sharing any pictures with us. Um, actually, not. No. If Why? You, well, we can. <laughs> Why? Yeah, we are we are out of time. That's the reason. <laughs> well, then, I told you to do it earlier. Didn't listen. Boo. All right. Well, I just want to say uh, thank you so much, Abdullah. Abdullah was kind of like our tour guide in this class, telling us what all the what all the words meant and like what all these places were. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Abdullah. Um, and I th I think I think Istanbul is a beautiful city, and there's so much more to explore. Uh, and I I think I would buy a carpet. I would, if I could haggle, I'd buy a carpet. I, don't know. I think I think I would. <laughs> you know, I'd buy one of those really small carpets. You know, like the really tiny ones. <laughs> and I'd put it on my table. And I'd be like, I went to Istanbul and I bought a carpet. Look, look, yeah. it's right here. Look, look, right there. So I would do that. <laughs> so I want to thank you, Abdullah. Thank you so You're much welcome. for indulging us, answering all of our questions, and thank you guys. Um, I'm, I, it's unfortunate we didn't get to cover we didn't get to cover more, but you can't ever cover everything there is to yeah. see in such a beautiful and such a big city. Uh, you guys are more than welcome to let me know what cities you'd want for next week. Uh, Blanca, I know you left some suggestions, so I'll, I'll, I'm going to get on that. All right. So thank you, everyone. Okay. Uh, Carolina, it was really nice to see you. Carolina was excited for this class. I hope I hope you had fun. Um, yes, of course. <laughs> no, I couldn't. <laughs> That's awesome. So I'll be back in a couple of hours with a few more classes. Uh, so I'll see you guys then. All right. So thanks, everyone. Okay. And I'll see so, you next time. Thank right? you. Bye.